Gaming, and more specifically modding, has had quite a few insane developments since I've been away. Hogwarts Legacy released modding support, Bethesda released Oblivion Remastered, No Man's Sky looked to Starfield and said, we got this. Awaken Realms have surprised us with Tainted Grail, Fall of Avalon, and Windows screws stuff up. Well, I suppose there's nothing new there. So let's catch up. So we'll start with Oblivion Remastered. Hearing the news that the world of Cyrodiil was getting a total makeover left me excited but incredibly skeptical. As much as I love Bethesda, I can't sit back and say comfortably that they're in people's good books. Firstly, we had Starfield, which was promoted as this 20-year passion project. The trailers looked thrilling, the soundtrack was excellent, reviews appeared to be glowing. I will say though, seeing a review from a site created by the most loyal Microsoft fans felt the teensiest bit biased. But there we are. Either way, it flopped. Now I'm sure there are elements to this game that many will have enjoyed and that's absolutely understandable, but ultimately it's, it's a package deal. The game fell short of any mark. You get this impression that it was created as a basis for modding and not a game of complete nature. Bethesda are not short of understanding that modders were not only responsible for keeping their biggest titles going years after release, but it was also profitable. So why create a finished product if you can charge 70 euro for a skeleton? Modders are not responsible for your profits, Bethesda. Either way, Oblivion Remastered certainly looks promising. I'd love to hear from those who've actually played it. I am somewhat concerned that Bethesda's priorities are in the wrong places. Naturally, a remaster is easier than creating a game from scratch, and after what I can only assume to be an enormous financial loss from Starfield, the funds need to come from somewhere. But with incredible developments like Sky Oblivion and the promise of Elder Scrolls 6 over seven years ago, without a word since, I can't help but feel disappointed that priorities are all wrong. But having the opportunity to relive the wonder days of Oblivion and potentially have another world that we can mod, it's good for us at least in some form. So we'll see how that one turns out. As for Starfield, well, I'd strongly suggest No Man's Sky instead. I'm still staggered by what they've been able to achieve there. No Man's Sky I had heard of course over the years and was well aware of its underwhelming launch, which always made me nervous, but a friend of mine sang its praises and it did make me wonder where it stood all these years later. Uh, shortly after I came out of hospital the, the first time, I wasn't in the best of places mentally. A friend of mine I met online back when I played QC could see things were rough and bought me No Man's Sky so that both of us could go together and explore space and shit and whatever. I just couldn't stop playing. I, I pulled two all-nighters for the first time in years. I believe I sank over 72 hours into it within the first hundred of owning it. I was hooked for sure. A month later, I'm also invested in modding. Uh, testing out how it works, seeing how you can expand on your enjoyment and the game and uh, oh boy, there are some beauties in it for sure. With it being nine years old, I wasn't sure whether it'd be worth covering on the channel and toyed with the idea until very recently when Hello Games just came out of nowhere with a massive update to the game, introducing the ability to build and fly your own ships called Corvettes. These would be somewhere between a fighter jet and a flying city, allowing you to customize the appearance, shape, size, interiors to your heart's content as if it was building a base that could fly around. This went down incredibly well apparently, with SteamDB showing an all-time high player count of just over 100,000 players, the largest return in the player base since the game's launch in 2016. There have also been some absolutely hilarious creations on Reddit, which you should check out because they're just brilliant. The creativity of some people, and I do hope to cover that in future, there's an awful lot there and it's not always quite straightforward, but very much worth doing. As for Section, the friend I mentioned, he actually came to visit me in Denmark a couple of months back, knowing I was still unable to leave my home, and just kept me company playing games and chilling. Honestly, this guy is something else, he's a mate for life for sure. That was... that was a very good time. Now, whilst I was away, I did have a welcome surprise from Awaken Realms, who reached out to me because of their upcoming open-world RPG. They very kindly gifted me a collector's edition, which included this copy of the game for me to play. The edition is beautiful. That's that's where this figure comes from. It is staggering and absolutely gorgeous. For the record, they haven't sponsored me or asked me to review this for them, nothing. I actually asked them if it was okay for me to talk about it because I enjoyed it. They replied to say it was absolutely fine and they even offered me two Steam copies of the full game that I could give away. How cool is that? Uh, feel free to check it out on Steam yourself. Um, the game itself is still being worked on now. They've just released a new, huge update. Uh, new game plus transmog, and they've expanded on the storyline. It's really cool. It does have a very Skyrim-y sort of Dark Souls vibe uh, combining the two. And it's, uh, 
I just love the way the team is doing all of this. It's very refreshing to see the passion and commitment invested into this. I really do hope it goes somewhere and it's nice to see a change. As for the giveaway, if you are interested, just let me know below. Um, be sure to mention Avalon as a reference and I'll, I'll pull all the names together and let that Google wheel thing pick one, two at random. You have until the 30th of September to enter. When Hogwarts Legacy announced modding support was coming, I was ecstatic. Modding is such a big part of PC gaming now, whether the game studios want it or not, and it was nice to see a game such as Hogwarts Legacy embrace this. Also, modding on Unreal Engine sucks. Like, really sucks. Pack files are a pain, merging mods becomes a necessity which needs to be deleted and merged again. If another mod gets added, it, it's horrible. So a way around all of that was an absolute winner until it wasn't. The problem is, amongst the pure joy and excitement, I remember that this is Warner Brothers. The same Warner Brothers responsible for that shit show that was Quidditch Champions. So it very quickly made me question their motives. Why the hell are they embracing modding now? And it didn't take long to work out. Now I will say that providing a creator kit for devs to design the mods was a great move. But honestly, that's about as far as I can go with compliments. And even then, the creator kit is over 400 gigabytes. It has to be installed via the Epic Games Store. F Epic Games. And crashed far too often. It feels outdated with a very poor user interface. And it can throw a tantrum if you sneeze too loudly. It was off-putting. So you can invest a thousand hours to learn the basics. But in under 100 hours, I was animating in Blender. So... The difference in user friendliness that made me appreciate Creation Kit for Skyrim to a whole new level. Yes, I know it's not perfect, but it's so far ahead of whatever the hell this is. Application aside, all mods go through CurseForge, not Nexus, and only selected mods will appear within the Hogwarts Legacy catalogue if Warner Brothers find them to be suitable, bringing the intention full focus. This wasn't about modding. It was about controlling modding. The system built into the game for mods is far too convoluted and doesn't provide full control. But now they will have to approve the mods. Forget replacing dialogue with film lines, soundtracks with film music, things that didn't have to make sense to others but added to your experience. That's the world you want. But that would infringe on copyright, which is a corporate issue, so that can't be allowed to happen. The result of which is hilarious, by the way. If you go on their mod page and audio, the category has remained empty since its launch. So yeah. Modding needs to be separate from business for many reasons, but a huge one is that modding gives us control. We can modify a game how we want, not how the companies see fit. As soon as rules come into play, it gets real messy real quick. It's kind of scary all this, isn't it? As for Windows, well, I can't be the only one who's just completely fed up with Microsoft's bullshit. It's exhausting. Long gone are the days of having a fully functioning operating system for the consumer. We've gone from user to used. Now Windows feels like that crap you get on a new smart TV. It's made to look flashy and it's promoted as helping you, but ultimately it's there to exploit and force you to play by their rules. Unfortunately, as a modder, it's somewhat difficult to move to Linux because of the limited support. But I do like a challenge. So I've come up with a couple of ideas. I'll be creating a new series that will guide through installing a clean, de-bloated installation of Windows, showing what third-party applications can benefit and what will hinder your PC performance and overall experience. We love modding after all. The other element is I will be exploring modding on Linux, what the limitations are, whether it's feasible to mod on Linux. Maybe there's a future there, after all, who knows. Steam Workshop as well for games like ETS2, that's really useful, and a lot of these things can be done in different ways, so we'll see. So lots planned, Skyrim, obviously. I do need a refresher with that one, naturally, it's, it's been a while. No Man's Sky is a great opportunity to explore. Windows is certainly an interesting one, so sit back and enjoy a world of modding opportunities. Perfect time for a brew.